Hey people on YouTube land, Zach Hall back here with another Bible review. And today I'm really excited to bring this review to you. Uh, this is a Bible I've been wanting for a really long time. And as you can see, this is the TBS Westminster. And of course I got the large print. It has a review copy from TBS, which I'm so thankful for. But I love that Bible so much I wanted to get their standard size, the regular size Westminster. And so when I bought the Bible to do the prize with, I went ahead and picked up the Westminster as well from EvangelicalBible.com. Check them out, guys, if you're interested in one of these Bibles, because they'll always normally have it for the cheapest price uh, for the TBS Bibles. So on uh, Evangelical, this TBS regular size is $69, and I mean, you really can't beat that. So I just want to kind of do a review on this and show you guys maybe the differences and a couple comparisons uh, for this one in the large print, and then even the, the differences between this and the Windsor. But as you see, it comes in this box, so similar to a large print box. Uh, except it doesn't say large print on it, obviously. But as you can see, that's how it's laid out. And again, this is a very nice box. I like this box. I like the design of it. Very simple, straightforward. It lists everything you need to know. If you want to pause that and look at that, you can. And there's a shot of the actual text size. It is a 9.6 font. It's the same size font found in the Windsor Bible. And it's the same exact type of font too. Same size and same exact font as the Windsor. So there's the box. <clears throat> we'll get into the Bible. This is a Mariva calfskin. And I'm going to try to get in really close because there's a difference here actually between the regular edition and the large print. And I think it's because this is bound by Youngblood and the large print's bound by Print Core in Belarus. But if you can see this, there's actually a nice grain and texture pattern to this pebbly it's very tactile like you can really this is grippy this has got a good grip and this is more of a um, kind of a more of a matte finish I guess a little bit of a shine so you can see there but you can see that grain and it's very soft uh, you know very well done but again it has like more of a grip feel and so here's the large print and this is Mariva calfskin I'm going to see if I can't get to show you guys the difference on this because even though it's Mariva Calfskin, it does look a little different as you can see here. And I know they're both Mariva Calfskin, but it looks like this might be a little more pressed out. The grain might be a little more ironed. And this has more of a matte finish. Uh, this one is a little bit more shiny is what I meant to say. Not much, but as you can see, difference. The left on the one on my left is a regular size, one on the right is a large print. And you can see the large print has a more matte finish and it looks smoother. As you can see, there's more of a pebbly and more coarse texture to the one on the left. And so this one's smooth and soft and a little bit more matte. This one's got a little bit more grain to it and a little bit more texture. It's got a little bit more grip to the Bible. You can hold on to this one a little bit easier. <clears throat> but you can see the different sizes here. So this is the same exact Bible, same exact layout, just different sizes. So you can see here. And if you want to see everything that is in the Westminster in detail, I encourage you to check out my large print review. Uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to kind of do some comparisons. I'll go inside and show you the inside of the Bible as well. But as you can see, so the large print's quite a bit taller, a little bit wider. And the thickness is about the same. I'll put them down here together. The regular edition, well, it might be the exact same thickness actually. I think the cover's just sticking up a little bit. But you can see the difference in those. They're just, the large print's really big. But the <clears throat> the regular edition is is my ideal perfect size um, Bible. It really is. And I think it says it on the back here at the bottom. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. So it's eight and a half inches tall by six inches wide by one and three, uh, one and three inches thick. So it's a great, great, great hand size Bible. This reminds me of the Bearing Precious Seed hand size as far as its height and length. Um, it's very easy to hold in the hand. This is just like a perfect preaching Bible. Very easy to hold on to, very easy to bring to the pulpit, um, very easy to handle and read from. But uh, looking at this now, we got the Mariva calfskin there. You got some tooled hubs, and they actually do come out, so there are slightly raised hubs here. And I went ahead and broke this Bible in already, so we should be able to get into the review pretty fast. And so I've had it for a couple days now. I haven't used it too much, but 
I know it's going to be good quality. So there's the red and yellow head and tail bands, the four ribbon markers. They are pit on top of each other, so there's two red, two black, um, but they are glued in on top of each other, so it's kind of a, one of the things that I, that's like the one thing I don't like about the Bible, but it's not really going to affect anything too much. The gilding's done really well. I don't know if you can tell, there's a little bit of fading right there in the middle, but uh, not a big deal, not a big deal at all. And then here you can see the four ribbon markers. <clears throat> now this is the difference right here between the Youngblood and the Bella Ruse edition. I want to point this out. And this is a vinyl paste down liner, just like the large print. However, on this one with the mesh tape, and I don't know if I can get this on a lighting where you can see it, but this has a tape. Yeah, you can see that line. And this one is glued off to the page on the inside. So this has a reinforced binding. This is edge lined, even though it's a paste down liner. Okay, so you see these two pages are glued together. That tape goes up in there, which means it's gonna move the stress point from here to out here, which is gonna give your Bible a lot longer life. Now, checking out the large print. Um, let me get that out of the way. I thought it was the same thing, but there's no second sheet. There's just a really thick piece of paper and then it opens straight up. So the Belarus one doesn't have where it's tabbed into this page here, whereas the Youngblood one does. However, I do think that there is some type of tape running up through here. So I think it is gonna have a long life, but it's not made like the Youngblood one is in that sense. So it doesn't have that tabbed in page. It just goes straight, straight into this one, which is gonna allow that Bible to lay you know, flat but the young, one, the young blood one doesn't have problems laying flat either. As you can see, you can just open it and it lays flat. <clears throat> so the first couple pages are going to have the cardstock, and of course it's got the scriptures, uh, different scriptures about the Word of God in it. And you're going to have a basic title page. Then you're going to get into the title page for the Bible. Here you can see this one's printed and bound, and that one's by Youngblood, whereas the large print is printed by Print Corps and Belarus. And then another difference here is that you're going to have the epistle dedicatory, but you're also going to have the translators to the reader. Okay, in the large print, you don't get the translators to the reader, but you do get the epistle dedicatory. Here you get both, and TBS does this the best. You can see they have notes about the Greek. They have... <clears throat> Uh, different notes about where the translators quoted from different people in history. You can see in the column there. And then they have just like different references the translators quoted. So Acts 7.51. So this is like really in depth. And I really love that. I love that they did that with this. And then after that you're going to get the unique features of the Westminster. And of course I go over this more detail in my large print review. After that, you'll get a book of the Bible with the page they start on and the chapter numbers. Then you'll get right into the Old Testament. And so the font is 9.6. And I actually wanted to bring out its best friend here, the companion. This is the giveaway Bible. But I brought this out just for the sake of comparing the font. Because it's the same exact font. And thanks to Burton Bibles, he kind of pointed that out to me. But as you can see this, that is the same exact font type and is the same exact size. Now the reason why I think it looks a little bit smaller in the Westminster, it's not, it's, they're both 9.6, but it's because in the Windsor, the text column's actually wider. So that means you, know, you just have more that you're looking at, whereas the Westminster, you know, the lines are shorter, so you're having to constantly move your head and therefore it gives it a smaller look, just, but just barely. It's still the same size, like I said, it's not gonna affect really readability, but there it is. So it's the same font type, same font size, both 9.6 fonts. And again, it, it's on the smaller size of a 9. I would compare this to like Thomas Nelson's Thin Line. It's probably about the same size print as that. Maybe maybe slightly bigger. But it's very easy to read, very readable. Um, because it's a modern font and the spacing so well, <clears throat> so well done. And it's line matched. You can see the lines uh, on the back side match the text on the front. And on top of that, it's really crisp. It's a digital font, so you're not going to have a lot of blotchy spots. The spacing in between the words are good. It's going to be really easy to read. And of course, the advantage, the advantage of the Westminster is having the four-column layout. So you know that all your references in this column are going to be on this side. So you don't have to scramble in the center column reference to look for it. It does have the pill crows just to show the dividing of the paragraphs or the thoughts. 
and then you're gonna have the asterisk of course which is gonna update archaic words then you have uh, numbers that are gonna give you a literal rendition from the Hebrew and the Greek and of course your letters are gonna give you references of course this has over 200,000 cross references in it making it the best and I do mean that the best King James reference Bible in the market uh, period hands down especially for the price point but you can see even in Genesis there this Bible does not have a problem laying flat and I you know, I got out of the, bo out of the box, <clears throat> broke it in, and you can see it's even laying down flat in the helps. So this is what makes it such a great preaching Bible, is that the font is, you know, great. If you can read the font in the Windsor, you can read the font easily in the Westminster. It's the same size font. Very clear, very, uh, you know, it's a darker font. It's uh, not like burn your eyes out bold, but it is more black than it is gray. And so that makes it a lot more easier to read. Then you're going to have the chapter summaries, of course. Um... And then, of course, you got your ribbon markers. You're going to have your running headers here. The psalm titles are actually in the same font as the scripture because TBS believes, since those are written in, they are inspired scripture. So that's why they're the same size instead of a smaller font. And also, I think this is called the Westminster. And someone can correct me if you get this far and you hear this. Um, I think it's called the Westminster because of the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, which was a confession made by the Westminster Divines, I believe back in the 1640s, somewhere around there. And the confession had a lot of scriptural references in it. Because the Parliament sent the confession back and they said, hey, this is great, but can you update it with a lot of scripture to back up what you're saying? And so they, they completed it with scripture references and it had tons and tons of scripture. So I think that's why they call it the Westminster Reference Bible in honor of the Westminster Confession of Faith, which had a lot of references itself. And so it only makes sense that in the Westminster Reference Bible, you would have the most cross-references of any King James. And I really believe probably any version of the Bible out there. So we're flipping through the New Testament. You can see this is not red letter. Of course, we're in the epistles now. And a uh, book uh, doesn't start on a different page. It starts on the same page the other one ends, unless that book is towards the end there. But again, in the back, so you got Revelation, right for Revelation, you're going to have your tables of weights and measures. Wouldn't mind, honestly, they had one blank page here just to kind of hide that. Uh, not that it's, you know, a deal breaker for me, but it is more of a aesthetic thing. It just looks better. That way you end, and then there's nothing really distracting you over here. But you can just see, I just love this font. And I really made my home in the Westminster. And the reason why I wanted to get this one is because the large print was just so amazing. And I'll even show you guys here. We'll compare the fonts. And actually, I'll just turn to the same passage. So that's at Psalms 57 through 59. Just so you can see that these are same exact pages. But yeah, I've been using the Westminster, and I really just wanted to kind of make my preaching home in the Westminster. It just has such great font, so many references. It's really clear, not really distracting when you're reading, even though it has so many references. At least to me. Of course, people, other people may be different. But here you go. You can see it's the same exact layout. So pages are the same. You can see the chapters are the same thing. References are the same. And the chapters in the same spot. So you're not going to have any difference, just a bigger font or a smaller font, depending on which one you have. Although the paper in the Youngblood one, I don't know if it's going to pick it up, but it looks like it is. The paper in the Belarus one printing is a little bit wider. This is a little bit more cream color. Um, and if I'm being honest, hmm, I don't know. Looking at it right now, this, I know, I know other people say that this pops off the page a little bit more. But I wonder if that's not just because it's a large font. Because to me, looking at it right now, and in the lighting I'm in, this looks to be catching my eye a little bit more. I just can see this a little bit quicker. This is definitely easier to read because it's bigger font. But this is popping off the page a little bit easier. But let me get these side by side. That way you can really see the font comparison here. And this is going to be a little bit longer of a review because we're going to kind of go just in depth and take our time here. <clears throat> But you can see the references in the large print are about as large as the font in the regular size. If you can see that. And then, of course, you're going to have your bigger font here. Smaller font there. But a uh, really great carry combo. So really what I wanted to do was I fell in love with the large print so much. And uh, that 
I was like, man, I want to make this my study Bible. Just leave this at home. and I'll take this everywhere with me and preach out of it. And it'll be my carry Bible and stuff like that. And just my preaching Bible. So I'll only be using this like rarely. I'll be using this one a lot to study out of. But um, the paper in this one is really thick. <clears throat> now it's not like the thickest paper, but it's easy to churn, easy to grab and get a hold of. The young blood paper is really easy to grab on, although this does feel slightly thinner. This feels smoother. It definitely feels more, uh, more, uh, or it feels like it has more quality to it as young blood paper does. It just feels really smooth. Feels nice to the touch. This is you can you can feel it's slight it's smooth, but it's slightly rougher, uh, which I mean is a good thing because it means its pages are easier a little bit to grab a hold on and to churn. But the young blood you're not going to have much problem either. But this paper is a little bit more cream color than this one. This is more off white. This is more cream color. So just be aware of that difference if there's a preference of what type of paper you like. I'm not sure the exact GSM, but I would have to imagine that. This is uh, somewhere in probably the low 30s because it feels thicker than pit minion paper for sure, but it doesn't feel like it's overly thick. So it's probably like a 32 or a 30 GSM paper. But uh, yeah, and you can just see kind of the general footprint. But I'm it's just amazing. This Bible, the, the regular size is so soft and this, this calfskin really is different than the large print. And I'm, I was so amazed by that because they're both Mariva calfskin. And I'm trying to really get the difference in that grain for you guys, but I don't know if it's going to... This just has like a more iron... Like, if you have a local church Bible, this has like the more ironed calfskin feel to it. This one, while it's definitely a smooth calfskin, it just has like a perfect texture. Like, it's nice and soft, but at the same time, you can just really dig in and hold on to this Bible. And the texture feels good. Like, I prefer this texture over this. But they're both great quality calfskin, so I don't want anybody to be confused about that. But getting back to this, uh, this just opens, oh my goodness, just opens so well. And you can see it's easy to hold in one hand. Because of the paste off liner, you really have an advantage of just being able to hold that Bible really easy. So you can see I can turn that towards me, we can read it here. And so this is really a, a perfect uh, preaching Bible in my estimation. Um, I know some people say this is a smaller font, but if you have 2020 vision, even maybe slightly worse than that, you should be able to read this just fine. Font's very clear, very easy to read. Like I'm, I'm probably a solid foot away from it, if not a little bit more, and I can read clearly what verse, <clears throat> what the verse number seven says up there at the end. It says, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings from the north, with horses and with chariots and with horsemen and companies and much people. He shall slay with the sword thy daughters in the field, and he shall make a fort against thee, and cast them out against thee, and lift up the buckler against thee. So that's just me reading it from, you know, a foot and a half away, in which, you know, that's about the distance a pulpit would be away from you. Just about, probably. <clears throat> so, you know, you're not going to have really any problems if you're a preacher and you had any questions about that. Now, the only other difference between the Westminster regular size and the large print is that there's a concordance here in the regular size. Okay, so you're still going to get your Bible reading plan. The, uh, I'll just say the guy's name. I, I think I said it, I said McCheyenne, but I, I think it's, or I can't say it, uh, Matthew Everhard released a video and he said a guy's name correctly, <laughs> but I, I say McShyam. It's the reading plan, takes you through the Bible in two years. You're going to have your list of proper names and how to say them, and you're going to have your weights of, or list of measurements and all that stuff as well. So there's no difference there. But you are going to get a thick concordance here. It's very well laid out. This is a Cambridge concordance, so it's going to be in paragraph format. Uh, which for me, you know, I don't really care because the font's so clear and crisp that it makes it really easy to read. But it is a thick concordance. You do get a lot here. So as far as study purposes, I would have to give the slight edge to the regular edition just because of the fact it has the translators to the reader and it has a concordance. And then in the back, once you do get through the concordance, You're going to have a bunch of blank pages, and I actually think there's more blank pages in the Youngblood edition than there are in the large print. <clears throat> okay, so that's the end. I'll see if I can't count these out real quick. So you got one, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and that's cardstock. So you have fourteen, fourteen pages in this one. And again, this is Bible paper, so it's going to be the exact same stuff that the Bible is actually printed on. <clears throat> and uh, so you get 14, so essentially that's 28 pages back and front. Whereas in the large print, you get 7, which is 14 total pages. So there's double the amount in this. But I think I know the reason they, why they did only 7 is because the paper obviously is so much bigger. So you can write more on the paper in this than you can in this one. So, but, I mean, some ideas you could have for this, you know, you could write <clears throat> your sermon notes, sermon ideas, illustrations, prayers, songs of encouragement, uh, you know, stories that you've had of vows you made to the Lord, uh, salvations, people you've led to the Lord, uh, encouraging events in your life. You know, you could write anything back here that you wanted to, and there's a lot of paper to do it. So that what, that's what, to me, makes this just a complete study Bible. I mean, you have the references, you have a good font, you have a clear font, easy to read, it's double column, easy to reference stuff, easy to find things, uh, verse by verse. You have paper in the back for notes from what you're learning and studying. You have a translators to reader, epistle dedicatory, uh, you have chapter summaries. All of those things just make this, to me, the best King James study Bible that you could have. Uh, you know, that doesn't have commentary, obviously. So there's 14 pages and you're going to get your maps all printed on non-glossy cardstock paper, which is awesome because I don't like the gloss as much. So, But they're simple maps. Of course, I show these in my large print review. So if you want to see a full review of that, you can go over there and check that out. Then you get to the back and this is tabbed in two here in the back. So makes it, you know, nice and makes uh, quality. I mean, it really is just top-notch quality. TBS is really becoming one of my favorite publishers. Now this is a pretty thick cut of calfskin, but that's because there's also a board in there. But this calfskin is super smooth, really nice. The printing on the side of the Bible was done very well. As you can see there, Holy Bible, Westminster. And there's, you know, there's not really any mess-ups in the gold. It's printed very clearly. Then you get the TBS logo. And those ribs, you can kind of see the little grains going across. Just an awesome, awesome Bible, hand size. And then just to show you the comparison of the size, here's the Windsor. And the Windsor is not a big Bible at all. And you can see the Westminster is only slightly wider and probably, probably in three quarters of an inch to an inch taller. And not even that wide, probably half of an inch wider, if that. And so. You know, you can't go wrong with either one of these Bibles. The only difference is why I like the Westminster and why I decided to keep the Westminster. I was going back and forth on which one I was going to do the giveaway on. Uh, just as me, for a preacher, I already had the large print. Really liked it. But just the fact that this Bible, because of the way it's made, will just lay flat anywhere. It lays flat in Revelation. It lays flat at Genesis. The Windsor, I have no doubt, over time, will lay down flat. But you can see here in Genesis... I mean, that's just, you know, it's just wanting to fight you and close. But once you work with this Bible and you break in that leather, it's going to lay flat because it's a sewn binding from TBS. So I'm going to put it that way. And of course, don't forget the giveaway. That's in now six days. But I want to do this review on the Westminster because I'm absolutely just blown away by the quality of the regular edition. This is by far my favorite Bible. And I can't wait to start preaching out of it and just go through it. <laughs> I'm almost afraid to mark it up. Um, you know, I think Pigma Micron pens would work very well on this Bible. Just like the Thompson, there's places to write notes <clears throat> in the margin. Of course, when you get to the New Testament and you're like in Romans or something, I mean, they just have so many references that you're not you're not going to get a word in edgewise <clears throat> when you get to Romans or you know an epistle like that. So let me show you guys here. I'll just like flip to the middle of Romans. So here's like Romans nine. I mean, yeah. Stuff for like right here, and you know, there's spots you can fit stuff in, but there's so many references over 200,000. And of course, uh, most of those 
are from John Brown's self-interpreting Bible, and then the rest of them are filled in from the Concord. And so, uh, they're just, just awesome study Bible. I mean, you really can't go wrong with this thing. So, but yeah, I probably would use Pigma Microns. Probably wouldn't go thicker than an 005, maybe an 01 for underlining. I probably wouldn't take notes with an 01 in this Bible. Um, you know, unless you want to use one. Of course, once you get to the back with a note paper, you could probably use slightly thicker pens and it probably wouldn't mess up anything too bad. But just in the Bible, I probably wouldn't want to use that myself. And uh, I wonder, I hope the camera's picking that, but you can kind of see that cream color there down the center. But this Bible seriously just amazes me how easy it's to read for its size. I mean, this is a preacher's best friend. I, I'm just blown away. TBS, great job, guys. You just knocked out of the park. I've never seen the, the regular size before, and I was just totally blown away when I picked it up. I was like, you know, there's this that immediate connection with the Bible that, you know, when you pick up one and you're like, oh, this is good quality. This is a good Bible. And that's what I got from this TBS, and you can just see how, how flat that Bible lays. And so... You know, if you guys are interested in TBS, I I really can't recommend them high enough. I, I really can't. Just blown away with the quality of their stuff. They do such a great job. Awesome ministry. Lovely people to work with and to talk to. Awesome customer service from their end. And they really love the Word of God and really care about producing it. And as you can see, it, you know, it's a little chubby for its size, but to me it's perfect. I, I really wouldn't change a thing about the size of this Bible. I really wouldn't. Everything from the font to the size, you know, you you can just take this in the pulpit. You can bring your notes and know that your Bible is not going to get in the way of your notes being up there. Or you have to make the awkward flip or the awkward churns during a sermon. Whereas the large print, you have to almost lay your notes on top of your text. And if you have to churn your Bible pages, you know, it can get into quite a mess. But with the regular size, I don't think you're going to run into that problem. So there it is, guys. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be doing some different comparisons. I want to do a comparison of the Westminster and the Thompson, so that should be coming out pretty soon just to show you the differences between those reference Bibles. Also, I want to shoot a kind of a top five uh, King James reference Bibles um, just to kind of give you guys a different idea of what's out there on the market, what you can get in your hands, and which ones are the best. And so I'll probably do a countdown of that. But, yep, so if you guys are interested in a carry, a carry combo too, I would... We couldn't recommend this high enough. You can use the large print at home for your studies, put it on your desk, take the regular size with you. And if you even wanted to, they do make a compact size of the Westminster, which is even smaller. And uh, this, now you beware because the font's even smaller. So the font in the compact, I think, is around the same size of the Pit Minion. So if you can read the Pit Minion fine, then you should be able to read that one fine. But it's even smaller than the regular size. So then you could have all three and uh, really have a killer carry combo. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have. Leave you guys with a couple shots of these. As you can see, just well-made Bibles. Great job, TBS. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great night. Take care, and God bless.